but you also have to put yourselves uh, in the minds of the officers in the field there. What would there be other ways for officers to deal with bystanders? Yes. And could that include calling for backup? Yes. Would the presence of multiple officers at a scene be a relevant fact for an officer to consider when using an amount of force on a handcuffed and restrained subject? Uh, no, it, uh, it, it should be. Well, but if, if there's some concern about the crowd, mm -hmm. would it be relevant that there were other officers already at the scene? Oh, I see. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't matter, the crowd, uh, as long as they're not attacking you. Um, the crowd really doesn't, uh, um, shouldn't have an effect on your actions. You were asked if the use of force uh, training has changed over time. Yes. Okay. But you still get the most up-to-date training every year when you go to the use of force training. I do, yes. Um, and you were asked about, you know, has the academy changed uh, since you went to the academy? Yes. And uh, you haven't been through the academy since then, correct? Right, yeah. But you have some familiarity with how the academy trains new officers? Absolutely. And do you think that academy training provides appropriate training for officers? Uh, yes, it should. And would provide the most up-to-date training on the use of force for Minneapolis officers that take the academy type training? Yes. Prosecutor Matthew Frank trying to shore up one of his key witnesses. Uh, Philip, how do you think he did? Well, let's be honest here. You know, how often does an officer, after they're hired, go through academy training? You know, when do they go through that training? Is it when they're initially hired? Do they have refreshers? Do they give them advanced courses? I mean, what goes on with that? Do they just put them through, you know, a, a three to six week boot camp and expect them to carry on for the rest of their career? Uh, I mean, it's just not realistic, right? As far as the crowd control, keep in mind that uh, the uh, the crowd was doing more than just standing there. They were heckling, they were yelling, they were name calling, they were standing there with cameras. It was a very, very intimidating situation. Now, I understand in the process, uh, the bystanders are beholding something that is very, very emotionally upsetting. I understand that. But you also have to put yourselves uh, in the minds of the officers in the field there. Most lay people think that you should just let people go. You know, he doesn't appear to be doing anything. They don't know what led up to that initial encounter. They don't know what went on during that encounter in the car. They don't know what went on in the store. All they're seeing is the officer responding uh, to the scene outside the store and the um, uh, the bystanders and the crowd do not have the full picture or the full context. As far as the training goes, there should be more training about hand to ha how to handle crowds, right? What do you do? Do you cordon off the area? Do you tell them to keep it down? Do you have somebody there with a megaphone telling them that there's an active investigation to back up, back off? What do you do? And it doesn't sound like that they do get proper training on how to control a crowd. And if they did, it sounds like it was at the genesis of their careers.